This is the start of another radio restoration project. This particular one arrived today and um, it's a low opta magnet 3737W. Again, another German radio. I have a particular fondness for them. And um, this one is actually in pretty good shape, at least uh, physically. We'll see about the rest. This one comes with the uh, pickup input, or rather tape, I believe they call the TA the tape input. It has uh, long wave, medium wave, and FM, the UW. So again, the UW, the uh, FM, as you can see over there, goes from 88 to 100 megahertz. This was pretty typical of the German radios of the time. The knobs seem to be a little bit grummy, but recoverable, I believe. Faceplate is fine, it's great, needs a cleaning, everything needs a cleaning, obviously. This one has a plastic surround, which is in perfect condition. Again, just needing the cleaning. The, cleaning. the grow cloth also seems to be okay, recoverable. Fantastic grime on those knobs, tone controls, and the selector knobs. We have high and low tone controls over there. That one there is the volume control. And then tuning on the right hand side. The cabinet also seems to be in fairly good condition. I don't see any major nicks and scratches. It's uh, in need of a cleanup and I think I'll probably get away with just removing the lacquer layer and redoing that. I think the actual varnish is fine which is a relief, quite frankly, because these are a real bummer to sand down to the wood. What I do notice is that there's a foot missing, which shouldn't be a problem. The back is fine. A lot of the uh, Labeling has gone very, very uh, faded, which is okay. That's the gramophone input, followed by what is this? Nothing. There's a hole there. And then the external speaker. That's your mains going in there. Mains voltage selector and uh, fuse. And over here we have the antennas. One will be the internal dipole or external dipole for FM. Um, the other would be a long wire antenna with a ground connection as well. I'm pleased. I'm actually quite pleased. This thing doesn't look like it's in bad shape. Usually when, you're, when the bodywork is okay, uh, it simplifies things a lot because that's the part that I hate to do. And I know a lot of people hate to do them too, but they've got to be done. There's no point having a perfectly working radio with a real crummy casing. But anyway, this one looks good. Now I'm going to open up the back and see what we've got inside. I don't see any major rodents living in here. The casing is this gold plated or not plated gold coloring. There's a date on there, 12th of December 1958. That's good. A little bit of dust. Uh, some major grime over here, but that shouldn't be a problem. 
This would be the, the IF transformers, IF amplifier, detector, preamp, and then this is the output, uh, what is it, an X EL84? Yeah, EL84. So that'll be easy to, to work with. I've basically worked with a lot of those on the radios that I've done. Transformer over here. I don't see any evidence of somebody tinkering here before. So this is pretty much in the original condition, which is great. Here's the ferrite rod for medium wave and long wave, and it seems to be fixed. It's not rotatable. So this means you move the radio around if you want to improve reception. FM tuner. Also a little grubby, but don't see anything major on here. There's a tuning capacitor, also very grubby, but hey, it's to be expected. I think before going anywhere, this thing needs a real bit clean. This one's got a big speaker here, and it also uses two side electrostatic tweeters, which sometimes need to be fixed up because they all the rubbering uh, inside dries out. Right, I'm actually looking forward to this. It's been a while since I did one of these old ones. And um, I'm going to get this thing out of the case, put it on its stand, the one I use to, to work on the radios, and uh, we'll have a look inside. So before going any further and taking this, uh, the radio out of its cabinet, I want to separate the speakers from... Uh, from the unit and um, what I'm going to do is just check where it goes keep this video as a, a record but what I seem to have here is I have this green wire goes up to the main speaker there's a common point it then connects to that one there so it is there's one second from the left that'll be the speaker output um, on the other hand, we have the electrostatics come from there. They're paralleled, so that other gray wire going over the top goes to the other electrostatic speaker. So what we have here is probably, yep, it's ground. That point there is a common ground. And then the electrostatic, the other end of the electrostatic connector goes to the end one. On the transformer. So I'll take that off there, take those two off there, take that off there, and I just want to check that this is in fact ground. I've connected one point of the multimeter there, the other end is connected to a convenient uh, ground lug over there, and I have 0 0.8, 0 0.9 ohms. That's about right for these, um, for these leads. So that is the ground, and I'm now going to just cut that off so that I can take this out of the cabinet without a problem. It's out of the case and um, no new surprises. Things are still looking dirty. It still hasn't cleaned itself. And uh, there's a lot of work to do here, but that's what this is all about. Now, the first thing I've done is um, I've soldered two wires on here for where the main speaker comes out. I'm ignoring the electrostatics for now and at the end of this wire I put one of these little things it's one of those uh, DC jacks with a uh, screw terminals at the back and the reason for this is that I have a speaker connected that speaker it's just a an old speaker that I have lying around that's connected to the other end of one of these and now whenever I want to connect it I just put this in there and I've got my speaker connected so I don't have to worry about where the radio is, the main cabinet with the, with the main speaker in it. I just connect it to that speaker for now. It makes it a hell of a lot easier to move this thing around and to, um, and to do the work on it. So I think uh, basically this thing is ready to start. And the first thing I need to do is um, let's check if we've got uh, a working upper transformer. Before going any further, I must say that um, getting information on this guy was pretty tough. All I have is this 
schematic. It's printed on two A4s, they stuck together, and it's the full schematic for the radio in, well, it's legible, but um, the, ins the information on this is pretty sketchy. There is no service manual that I can find. There's no list of instructions, there's no dial cord schematic, you know, the usual thing that you like to have before you start a restoration. So this one becomes a little bit more of an adventure and um, it seems pretty straightforward uh, having worked on another low opta before this and on the other German radios. They do tend to be fairly familiar uh, when you look at the, at the schematic and when you look at the actual radio itself. Uh, even the tubes are becoming quite familiar. They tended to use pretty much the same tubes for the different functions. So I'm not too afraid yet. I hope those aren't famous last words to get started on this guy. And I guess that's what I need to do. I want to put a tone across the primary of this transformer and see if the speaker gives us sign of life. If I hear the tone through there, it means my output transformer is working. So the best way to do that is to see where these guys go. That goes to the anode of the EL84. And the anode of the EL84 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Pin 7 of EL84, right? So on pin 7 of EL84, I have that side of the transformer. This other side is the one I want. And if I follow it, goes all the way down, there's a filter cap over there, but I'm trying to find an easily accessible point, and here it is. It's the positive output of my, um, of the bridge rectifier. And I can see that fairly easily over the top here. There's my bridge rectifier. So if I put this on the positive, put one connector, of this being the signal generator. I've got it at one volt peak to peak and I've got a 500 um, hertz tone on here. I've clipped this end to a little piece of wire which I'm going to insert into pin 7. So when you measure the other way this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and we've got a tone. Don't know if you can hear that. Right. Great stuff. We've got a tone coming out of the speaker. That means that our output transformer is fine. Now, the final test I'm going to do at this stage is just to check that we have um, the power transformer working uh, on, on the radio. Because if that's gone, might as well stop right here. Now, what I'm going to do is I've checked, I've checked this basic connection here. It goes to one side of the transformer. This is just with the ohmmeter. Um, check the fuse; it's fine. I've not checked this capacitor. This is one of those that's going to have to go. Uh, it goes into the 220 winding, and and that seems to be in the right winding over there. It then comes out of here, you got the 6.3 for the heaters, so I should be able to measure 6.3 volts AC on the heaters between ground and either the heaters or the lamps. The uh, dial lamps, which there are two of there, yep. Yeah. And then I can also measure B plus coming out of the uh, bridge rectifier, but I don't want to pop anything, so what I'm going to do is I know that all the power starts at this point and I can see the bridge rectifier quite clearly there and I've desoldered it just before starting this the two wires that are lying or hanging loose on the end there that come out of the B plus out of the positive of the uh, bridge rectifier so at the moment I have the transformer feeding a bridge rectifier with no load at all on it and no voltage going to the rest of the radio so it should be safe to switch this on. I should get practically no current. 
Well, there's a little bit of current in the heaters, um, quite a bit of current actually if they're working, but on the uh, AC side, on the uh, main side, there should be very little current actually. Um, and I should be able to test for B plus over there. It hasn't gone at that point through any capacitors. It hasn't gone anywhere yet because I removed the two wires. So let's do this. I've connected this to the dim light limiter. It is active. It is off. I have all the lamps off except the 40 watt bulb. So that's the maximum restriction on there. I believe I have the radio off. Yeah, this thing switches on by pushing one of the uh, one of the bands. At the moment, it's off. So I have the multimeter connected to the ground on the chassis, and I have this guy ready to test the B plus carefully. So let me move things aside and try it. This is just putting on the power to the system. The radio is still off. So now if I push, this is the FM, I have that light going on dimly and dimming down which seems fine. There's 200 volts on there, so it's reduced a bit because of the, what is it, 100 milliamp current. Okay, now let's see what we've got on here. It would seem that the heaters are actually drawing current, otherwise that current would be practically zero. Now if I measure this guy over here, what do I have? 224 volts DC. Let me move that away before I short something. 224, brilliant. The transformer is working and the heaters are coming in. Can you see that? The light bulbs are dead. That's fine. Both of them. Both of them are dead. But the heaters are working on some of these at least. I can't see that guy, but you can certainly see that one and that one. Right, so our transformer's working. Both of our transformers are fine. Both the, let me switch this off before something goes bang. I have the output transformer tested, it's working. I have the power transformer tested, it's working. I don't know if the voltages are right or, or wrong, but they're in the ballpark. So this is worth going ahead and carrying on with it. And I think what I'll do is uh, stop this video for now, and the next time you see the next one will be getting things ready for the first real power up with um, I have to go through everything, make sure it's safe and then we'll try see if we're ready for a power up. All right. See you soon.